Okay, guys, welcome. So today we're going to talk about polynomial division. Um, we're going to talk about, first of all, how to divide a polynomial by a monomial. And then we'll talk about how to divide a polynomial by any other arbitrary polynomial. Okay, so first of all, um, I want to refresh you um, of the property that if you have a bunch of terms in the numerator of a fraction being added over one single term, then what we can do is we can separate each of those terms um, and then write them each over that denominator, right? And then once you have that point, you can then use your exponent properties to simplify each term, okay? So for example, I wanna divide this long polynomial in the numerator by the five X to the third, okay? So what I wanna do first is I wanna use that property that's in the green to separate this. So I have five X to the fifth, over 5x to the third, oops, minus 3x to the fourth over 5x to the third, plus 10x to the third over 5x to the third, plus 25x squared over 5x to the third, minus 50x over 5x to the third, plus 3 over 5x to the third. Okay, and now we just simplify each of these terms. So in each case, we're gonna look at the number that's out front first, right? So in this case, five divided by five is just one. And then we reduce our x values, right? So x to the fifth over x to the third, right? So what happens there is you subtract them. So you get x squared, All right? So we can actually even ignore this one if we want as well. We're just gonna call that x squared. All right, now in the next one, I can't do anything with three over five, but it looks like I'm gonna end up with just an x up top, right? Because if I have four x's in the top and three in the bottom, three will cancel and I'll have one left in the top. Okay, now in the next one, we have a two. Since I, if I do 10 divided by five, I'm gonna get a two. And the x to the thirds actually both just cancel each other out. So that middle term, um, well, that third term, I should say, is just two. Now, on the next one, 25 divided by five will give me a five, but now my bigger power of x is in the bottom, so I need to put my x there, okay? And then similarly, in the next one, if I do 50 divided by five, that's a 10, and I'm gonna have x squared in the bottom. In the next one, we can't do anything with it, um, so we just have, three fifths, three over five X to the third, I should say. Okay, so we'll do one more example of that, but hopefully it's not too bad. So again, first we're gonna use that rule to separate. And then we have four X to the third Y, two X to the fourth Y to the third, 16 Y to the fifth, 2x to the fourth, y to the third, minus 3x squared over 2x to the fourth, y to the third. Okay, so same deal as before. So if I do eight divided by two, that gives me a four, and it looks like I'm gonna be left with one x up top and one y down bottom. Okay, next one we have a two in the top, and it looks like I'm gonna have an x in the bottom as well as y squared in the bottom. Now in the next one, 16 divided by two is an eight, and it looks like I have an x to the fourth in the bottom and a y squared in the top. Okay, and then finally the last term, we get a three over two, and then an x squared in the bottom and a y to the third in the bottom. Okay, so that's dividing a polynomial by monomial. Hopefully that's not too bad. Okay, now if you wanna divide a polynomial by another polynomial, what you have to do is you have to do what's called polynomial long division. Okay, so to do that, we follow the, these steps. So first you want to arrange both polynomials by decreasing powers of X, right? So you wanna, most of the time we sort of write this anyway because it seems more natural, but you want to make sure that each of these are written um, from highest power to lowest power. And this is very important. If a power is missing, 
you want to make sure to write a term with a zero coefficient so that everything stays lined up nice. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to divide the first term of the term of the dividend, which is the thing on the inside, by the first term of the divisor, right? Then you write whatever that answer is above the first term on the inside, okay? Then you're going to multiply the divisor by the thing that you found in step two, and you'll subtract from the product, all right? And then you're just going to keep doing this again until your remainder is less than the degree of the divide. I should say the degree of your remainder is less than the degree of your divisor, all right? Now, before we do this with polynomials, I just want to refresh your memory on how you would do this with regular numbers. So let's say if I wanted to do 23 divided by five, okay? Well, what did you do? Well, you say, how many times does five go into two? It doesn't, so consider the next number. Five goes into 23 four times, okay? Then you do four times five and you get 20, and you subtract it and you get three. Now, of course, here there's nothing left to bring down, so this is your remainder, right? So what we have is that if I do 23 divided by five, I'm gonna get four, plus another three over five, All right? So at some point along your, your scholastic travels, uh, this is something that you probably learned, how to do long division uh, with regular numbers, right? The, processes for, the process for polynomials is not that much different. So I think the best way to see that is with an example. Okay, so we want to, in part A, we want to divide 3x to the third minus 7x squared plus 1. You'll notice I skipped a spot there because there's no x term. I want to write in 0x. We're going to divide that by x minus 2. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're always going to look at this x out front. We're going to look at your highest power on the outside, your highest power term on the outside. And that's what you're going to use to sort of check what divides uh, the expression on the inside. All right, so starting with the first term, this 3x to the third, how many times does x go into 3x to the third? Well, I need a 3 and an x squared. You're almost sort of factoring here, okay? So now we multiply. So now I do 3x times this and write the answer here. So if I do that, I'm gonna get a 3x to the third minus a 6x squared. And I need to subtract that. So when you subtract that, this term should always cancel, and of course it does. Now, if I distribute this negative, you're gonna see that you get a minus x squared. Okay, and now we need to bring down the zero x, sort of as a placeholder. All right, well now we just repeat. How many times does x go into minus x squared, well, I need a minus x. Then when we multiply it, minus x times x is a minus x squared. Minus x times minus 2 is plus 2x. All right, remember to be very careful with your parentheses here. So now when we subtract, of course, these go away. And I have 0, once I distribute, minus 2x, so I get a minus 2x. Okay, then we bring down the one. We repeat it again, so x goes into negative 2x, negative two times, and then negative two times x is a negative 2x, negative two times positive two is plus four. So now when we subtract, the two x's cancel, and I get one minus four, which is negative three. Now, since x can't go into negative three and there's no more terms to bring down, this is our remainder. All right, so we could say that if I were to do three x to the third minus seven x squared plus one and divide it by x minus two, I would get the expression on top, which is three x squared minus x minus two plus the remainder, in this case, minus the remainder three over x minus two. Right, so just where all this stuff came from, this was the actual quotient. 
and this is the remainder over the original divisor. Right, so that's sort of how we can format this answer. All right, let's do the next one. So in part B, I want to divide three X to the third minus four X minus five. Let me move this. I want to divide it by X minus two. Okay, so again, um, one thing that I need to do here so I need to give myself a little bit of extra room so I can put a zero X squared term. Okay, so this is a minus four X. I don't know what, oh, I guess that five got messed up. Okay, but I need to put a zero X squared term in here. Okay, now how many times does X go into three X to the third? Well, again, that's just a three X squared. And then when we multiply, we get a three X to the third minus six X squared. Now, when I subtract my three X squared cancel, and I'm gonna get a six X squared. Okay, so now we can bring down the minus four X and repeat. So how many times does X go into six X squared? Well, I need a six X. And then 6x times x will give me a 6x squared, of course. And then 6x minus, times minus 2 will give me a minus 12x. So now when we subtract, we'll change the sign. We're going to get an 8x. Bring down the minus 5. How many times does x go into 8x? Well, I need an 8. And when I multiply, I get an 8x minus 16. And then when we subtract, my eight X's cancel out and I end up with 11. And of course, this is my remainder again. All right, so this tells me that three X to the third minus four X minus five divided by X minus two is equal to the number or the expression I should say that's on top, three X squared plus six X plus eight and then plus the remainder over what we divide by. Okay, so that's our answer there. Now, this might seem weird at first, but it's one of those things where once you practice it a couple times, it starts to get a little better. Okay, part A, we wanna divide x to the third plus one, and I wanna make sure I put some zeros in there for x squared and x plus one. We wanna divide that by x plus one. Okay, so if we do that, x of course goes into x to the third x squared times, and then I'll get an x to the third plus x squared. So when I subtract, these cancel, and I'm gonna get a minus x squared. And then bring down the zero x again as a placeholder, and then repeat. So x goes into negative x, negative or sorry, negative x squared, negative x times. And when we multiply, we'll get a negative x squared minus x. All right, so then we subtract. So if I add a line change the sign, I'm going to get an x when this is all said and done. And then when I bring down the one, we find that x goes into x one time if I do one times X plus one, I get X plus one. And when I subtract, I get no remainder, right? So this tells me that X to the third plus one divided by X plus one is just equal to X squared minus X plus one, right? And this might look familiar. And if you multiply both sides by X plus one, of course, you're gonna get the sum of two cubes formula, right? So that's exactly what's going on here. Okay, last example. We have x to the fifth 
and then no x to the fourth term, so I'm going to put a plus 0x to the fourth, minus 5x to the third, plus 3x squared, plus 6x minus 6, all divided by x squared minus 2. Okay. So how many times does x squared go into x to the fifth? Well, it's going to go in x to the third times. All right, then x to the third times x to the fifth is x to the fifth. And then I'm going to get a minus 2x to the third, right? I want to make sure I line everything up. So here there's actually also no x to the fourth term. Now, when I subtract, my add a line, change the sign here, my x to the fifth is canceled, which of course is good. There's no x to the fourth term, and I'm going to end up with negative 3x to the third. Okay, so now how many times, oops, I forgot to bring down the 3x squared. Okay, so now how many times does x squared go into minus 3x to the third? Well, I need a minus 3x. Right, and then minus 3x times x to the third, sorry, x squared will give me minus 3x to the third. And minus 3x times minus two is a plus 6x. Right, and I guess I should actually bring this down too so that they all line up. Now when I subtract here, what's gonna happen is, add a line, change the sign here, there's nothing to change here. My three X's cancel out and so do my six X's and I get a three X squared, all right? And then I can bring down the minus six, all right? Well now, how many times does X squared go into three X squared? I get a plus three. And then, so when I multiply, I get a three X squared minus six. So I'm actually gonna get no remainder again. So this tells me that if I divide X to the fifth, minus 5x to the third plus 3x squared plus 6x minus 6, and I divide that by x squared minus 2, I'm going to get exactly x to the third minus 3x plus 3. Okay, so that concludes this video on division with polynomials. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.